guys, this is Jocelyn from Fantasia Elegance with another wire wrapped jewelry tutorial for you. Seeing as Valentine's Day is just around the corner here, I thought it would be fun if I take some time in this video to show you how to make this very cute little uh, double heart wire wrapped ring. And this is a very easy style to do and it's super versatile because it is an adjustable ring as well. So let's jump right in and show you how to make this. As far as tools you'll be needing goes, you'll just need your standard round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and flush cutters. You'll also need to have a good ruler on hand. Um, I will be showing you how to do this with um, measurements in centimeters, so if you have a metric ruler, that's what you're going to need. And you might also find it helpful to have a sharpie. For the wires, you're going to want some 20 gauge dead soft round wire. I purchased mine from RioGrande.com, and I will be using silver filled wire. Of course, you can use any type you like, as long as it's 20 gauge, dead soft, round. As you can see here, I have done this both in sterling silver and a very pretty brass wire. It turns out well either way. In addition to that 20 gauge wire, you're also going to want some either 26 or 24 gauge wire. Um, again, I'll show you on my rings here. So on this one, I did, on this brass one, I did 24 gauge wire for the wrapping here. And on this one I did 26 gauge, so it just gives you a slightly different texture for the wrapping there, but either gauge will work just fine. So again, you want some 20 gauge dead soft round, and either 24 or 26 gauge dead soft round wire. So let's talk about what wire lengths you'll be needing based on different ring sizes that you're trying to make for this. Um, so what I would recommend you do is hop online and print out one of these um, ring size conversion charts. I just got this one off of Wikipedia. And I will put a link in the description section below where you can go to the same page where I got this one. What you're going to need to have is um, a list of the inside circumferences right here for different ring sizes. And I will be working with the uh, United States ring sizing. Um, so you want to focus in on this column that says inside circumference in millimeters. So very simply what you're going to do once you have a chart like this in hand, and you don't have to print it out, you can just look at it online. Um, just find whatever ring size you want to make. So I'm going to go for an 8 size 8, US size 8. And you want to look over and see that um, your size is, well mine will be 57 millimeters right here, which of course is 5.7 centimeters. So you want to keep that number in mind for your inside circumference. And I do have a formula for you to know uh, what length of wire to use. It's very simply going to be your ring size circumference in centimeters, and you're going to add on 6.5 centimeters to that to get your wire length that you need to cut out of 20 gauge wire. So again, find on your chart your ring size, find your inside circumference in centimeters, and add on 6.5 centimeters to that. So since I'm trying to make a size 8 ring, that's going to be 5.7 centimeters. You add on 6.5 and you get 12.2 centimeters. So what you're going to do is take out your 20 gauge wire and you're going to cut two pieces of that length. So I cut two 12.2 centimeter pieces of 20 gauge wire. You do need two of each one. So go ahead and do that, and we will get started on making this ring. So to get started on this, go ahead and take one of those pieces of the 20 gauge wire you just made, and pull out your ruler. We are going to be marking something on here. So what you're going to do is make a mark with your Sharpie 5 centimeters from the end of this. So I'm just going to measure it right there, put my thumbnail on the distance, and I'm just going to put a little mark with a Sharpie right there. And don't worry, this rubs right off once we're done. Just so I have a little reference point there. And what we're going to do is start by making one of these little hearts. And the distance we've just marked there is where you're going to be wrapping the wire after forming the heart. So that's kind of our little reference point. So you're going to just take your uh, chain nose pliers, grip that wire a little bit up from the mark we just made, and just start bending this around and we're just going to make that little heart shape. So I'm going to bend it around in a U shape just like that. And it help, if it helps you, we'll reference what we're doing here. So we're just doing that. And as you can see, we want to now wrap it over on itself to do the little cent center portion of the heart right there. 
And you can really eyeball this based on what you want the heart to look like. And you can also do a lot of adjustments towards the end once you get a rough shape in here. So I'm just going to start putting in a little curve just like that. There we go. So that's the center of the heart. And then you just pull this on around to finish up your heart shape. And as you can see, it's not a perfect shape, so we got to refine this a little bit. There we go. And what you want to wind up with is having your tail crossing over that mark we made earlier. Just like that. So there's our little heart. And we've got a tail. And what we're going to do now is wrap this on around the shank here. And this is going to continue on and wrap around your finger to make the ring. So I'm just going to grip it right where it meets there with my chain nose pliers and start wrapping that on around. Just like that. Once you've got it around, you can let go of that and start using your pliers to tighten it. So I'm just continuing to wrap here. You want to do two or three full wraps around this if you can. And you'll wind up with more or less of a tail depending on how large you make your heart. Um, just for reference, I'm making mine about... Let's see here. It's about 0.9 centimeters across there. Just for your reference to know how large I'm making my heart. So once you have three wraps here, just go ahead and pull out your flush cutters and trim that off. And then I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to squeeze that on down again. So there we've made one of our little heart portions. Next step is to do the exact same thing on your other piece. So pull out that other piece of wire. I'm just going to set this aside. And same as before, we're going to make a mark with our Sharpie five centimeters in. Just like that. And same as before, I'm just going to start curving this on around to shape our heart. And now that you have your previous one, you can use that to reference what you're doing. There we go. So that'll kind of give you a benchmark for how you shape your second piece here. Alright, and I'm just going to check one more time that it matches the one we just made. And they don't have to be identical, you just want them to be about the same size. There we go. And exactly the same as before. I'm just going to use my chain nose pliers to grip it here. And we'll start wrapping that tail on around. So now you should have two roughly identical pieces, just like this. And our next step is going to be, and just so you can see what we've got going on, one piece is going to be like this, and the other one's going to be like this. Let me zoom in a bit here. So you can see what's going on. So we're going to have them arranged like this, and each end here is going to curl out and nest in right under the heart here. So our next step then is to curl this end in a little S shape just like this one. So let's go ahead and do that. So just pull out one of those uh, 
part pieces you made and your round nose pliers. And we're just going to go to the end and start making an S shape going the opposite direction from our heart. So we're going to curl this up this way. And you want to make a very nice tight spiral here. And I'm just curling that around once. And then I'm going to tighten it up so it's a smaller spiral using my chain nose pliers. Just like that. Go ahead and do the exact same thing on your other piece. And let's once again arrange these as they're going to be. Alright. So as you can see, we have one wire meeting and the other not meeting. So what we're going to do now is adjust this a little bit. I'm going to make this one a little longer so that it reaches the heart here. I'm just going to do that by unspiraling it a little bit. And now they are meeting properly, just like that. So as you can see, all we have to do now is bind these two wires together with our 24 or 26 gauge wire. So let's talk about what length of this 24 or 26 gauge you're going to be needing. Alright, so pull out your ruler again. And you have your pieces arranged as they're going to meet together here. What you want to do is get the measurement from the base of where we wrapped this one to the base of where we wrapped this heart. So you're measuring the distance from here to here. And we're going to get that measurement in centimeters. Okay, so what we're looking at here is about 5.7 centimeters. Um, let me just check my formula. Alright, we're actually going to do millimeters, so that's 57, 57 millimeters. Alright, so very simply, each millimeter of distance we're trying to wrap here is going to need a half inch or so of 26 gauge wire. So, what we're going to do, let me pull out my little calculator here. We've got 57 millimeters here. If I can get this where you can see it. 57 millimeters of distance we want to cover. And your formula is that for each millimeter of distance, you're going to need 0.54, about a half inch, of 24 gauge wire. So I'm just going to multiply 57 times 0.54. Alright, so for the size 8 ring I'm trying to make, I need 31 inches of 26 gauge wire. So let me go ahead and cut that. Pull out my wire here. Now for measuring this, let's zoom back out a teensy bit. For measuring this, you can use a standard 12 inch ruler and uh, just repeat it along the line you want. Or you can use a measuring tape such as this to get a longer distance of measurement, since we are trying to get 31 inches here. So you very simply measure that on out. And we now have our length of 26 gauge wire. So this is the point at which we are going to start binding these both together. What you're going to do for starters is just take one of them and take the very end of your 26 gauge wire or 24 gauge would work as well. What we're going to do is have about a little under an inch of it sticking out here. I'm just going to hang on to both the thinner wire and the heart with my thumb. I'm going to pull out my chain nose pliers and just start wrapping this just so we have an anchor point for it. And I'm going to wrap this three or four times 
very tightly right around the base of the wire just below the spirals for that heart we shaped. There we go. Once you have a couple wraps like that, go ahead and pick up your other piece and we're going to nest them together like this. Now what we're going to start doing is wrapping this wire back and forth around each piece binding them together. So as you can see here we've done a couple wraps around this top one and we're now going to bring the wire over to this other, other side and start wrapping it around the bottom wire here. So I'm just going to wrap this twice around the bottom wire. So there's once and bringing it around just like that. There's twice and you can kind of slide these together. And your first few wraps are going to be a little bit loose. You can just tighten those up with some chain nose pliers. Just so everything is staying nice and snug. So we're going to do a two and two wrap. So I'm going to wrap twice around one, then go to the other, wrap twice, come back, etc. So we've wrapped twice around this lower one. I'm going to bring the wire on up and now wrap twice around the upper one. And you can continue using your uh, nail or a tool just to make sure it's all staying snug. There we go. So I wrapped twice around that upper one. Let's switch now, wrap twice around the lower one. Here we go. I'm just going to use my pliers to tighten that up a little bit more. And at this point you should be starting to get into a nice little rhythm of wrapping here. And it should be getting easier to keep everything together. And as you can see here, if we started out, uh, these were a little closer together, and you notice that the two wires are diverging a little bit as you continue wrapping, that's okay. Just as soon as you notice it, take your chain nose pliers, just give it the teensiest bit of a squeeze. That'll bring it all back into alignment for you and help you to have a uniform distance between the two wires as you continue wrapping here. So what I'm going to do is have you uh, go ahead and finish up wrapping this distance. We're just doing the same thing over and over, two on the upper one, two on the lower one, going back and forth between it there. And go ahead and come back once you've gotten to the end here, and I'll show you how to finish that off. Alright, so here I have finished wrapping the entire length all the way up to the base of our heart and the little squirrel here. So let me just show you how to finish this off. Um, when you start getting low on wire, on your uh, 26 gauge wire here, you might need to switch over to chain nose pliers just to help you tighten it and wrap it. And what you want to do when you just have a little bit left like this is to go ahead and wrap the remaining amount right below the uh, ring shank right here. So let's do this side first. So I've just got a little bit left here and I'm just going to wrap it right below where we wrapped the uh, heart design. And as many wraps as you can get, just go ahead and use up that wire there. And 
and you can just use your chain nose pliers to tighten that end on down so there's no loose end, there's nothing poking anybody. And for the other end where we started out, since we already have some anchoring wraps on there, I'm just going to trim that off pretty close to the ring and use my chain nose pliers to tighten down that end and it'll just blend in with the other wraps and not be visible anymore. So there we go, we are almost done. All we have to do now is wrap this around a, ming a ring mandrel. So I'm making a size 8 ring. I'm actually going to wrap around 7.5 or so just so I get a nice bend to this. It's easier to make it a little bit bigger at the end. And what you're going to do is just uh, overlay these two hearts so they're side by side just like that. Go ahead and slide it off your mandrel and you're going to need to do a few minor adjustments um, for this swirl here as you can see it's sticking up at a funny angle I'm just going to adjust that with my chain nose pliers so that it's more in line with everything and on this side the heart's pointing down a little bit so once again I'm just gonna curve that back up a teensy bit adjust the swirl over here and as you can see everything's in line a little bit better now you might need to tweak the uh, shape of your ring as well There we go, and optimally you want this to be meeting so that the two hearts are meeting right here. You do have some wiggle room, you can make it bigger, a little bit smaller. So that's where the adjustability of it comes in. But as you can see there, we have finished this very cute double heart swirl ring. Which, of course, it's in honor of Valentine's Day coming up, but it's a very fun and cute style for any occasion. You can make these for um, really anyone special in your life. They are a lot of fun for best friends, sisters, mother, daughter. You can do two, uh, you know, one for each of you. So I hope you found this design helpful and enjoyed making it. If you run into any issues or have any questions about it, do feel free to comment in the um, comment section below. Let me know how this turned out for you. And also feel free to comment if you have ideas for future tutorials you'd like to see. Um, and as always, please do subscribe for more videos uh, like this video. And if you could take just a few moments to check out my Etsy shop and Facebook page, the links are in the description section below. I would greatly appreciate that. So thanks for watching and happy crafting!